And welcome back. Now, the Democratic Republic of Congo is set to hold the elections on the 23rd of December. The country continues to grapple with political instability and security issues ahead of this highly anticipated poll. Now, South Africa is a guarantor of the peace process that is currently underway in the DRC. And uh, South Africa has also taken part in a high-level meeting of the Great Lakes region in Kampala, Uganda. Uh, Joseph Kabila, who is uh, the DRC He's a 47-year-old president, announced that he will not stand for the presidency for a third term after he's been to the DRC president for the past 21 years. Now, Ngaba Yomzi Kwankwa visited uh, the country. He is, of course, the founder and chairman uh, parliament of the Parliamentarians Association for Human Rights, or AFRIPA. Uh, but before we speak to him, let's just take a quick look at this insert. This is the heart of the continent. When DRC is healthy, the continent is healthy. The Democratic Republic of Congo, a country rich in mineral resources such as coltan, cobalt, uranium, and even oil and fresh water. But the people here are battling with poverty due to conflict and political instability. South Africa has been involved in trying to ensure that the country is at peace and Pretoria says it will continue to assist. We had to make everything possible to make sure that DRC remains healthy in spite of all the challenges and difficulties. South Africa will continue to be in the Democratic Republic of Congo for as long as the heads of state of the SADC region have not taken a decision to withdraw the force intervention brigade. So we are there as part of the framework brigade, but also there as part of the force intervention brigade together with Malawi and Tanzania. Many have raised concerns that these efforts should not be in the interest of the political elites, but rather benefit the ordinary people. If we have a stability today, it's because of the SADC troops being there. So our, our position as, as a country is that we rather, we prefer to have the SADC troops with us than all these other international troops out there basically as a tourist. I don't know if you saw uh, a report where uh, uh, a patrol car from the MONUSCO troops uh, was in an accident. And when they open it, what do they find inside? A lot of beer. Cases of cases of beer, cases and, and then the coltan, the mineral that everybody is seeking, it was inside there. Have the UN made an investigation for that? Of course not. You know. So those are kind of issues that we have been dealing with. We feel very comfortable uh, with the SADC troops, including South Africa, being here to help us. South African politicians have not invested in Congo. The ministers from both countries will discuss a program that is aimed at assisting the DRC to be better prepared for the elections that will see President Joseph Kabila steps down. Sophie Mukwena, SABC News, Kinshasa, DRC. Well, Mr. Kwankwa, uh, firstly, one of the first things that strikes me here, the DRC going to polls two days before Christmas. Mm -hmm. Is that at all at all odd in any way? Well, as a neutral observer, it does look a bit odd. And in fact, when we're interacting with various stakeholders in the DRC, a lot of them express concern about the choice of the date, uh, primarily because they feel like some of the people who would be willing to come to the DRC to, to observe elections would be otherwise engaged during that period. And, uh, and, you, and as you know, that whenever you interact with political role players, there will be a number of political conspiracies that people put forward as arguments. But as Africa, we, all we had to do was to listen to that, obviously. It's up to the people of the DRC to decide what they want to do with their country. And of course, uh, this election uh, was initially, they were meant to go to elections 2016, was it? And then we heard there was no money. Mm -hmm. So where did the money come from now? Well, that, that's one of the questions that uh, some of the opposition party leaders in particular are concerned about. They were saying, I, I want to give you an example. Uh, one of the senior opposition party leaders, the Vital Kamehe of the UNC, uh, said without the you know, uh, disclosure around, or transparency rather, around the funding model 
for the elections, it's difficult for them to know whether or not there will be indeed be elections on the 23rd of December. They want to be part and parcel of the planning process so that they can understand if there are any funding shortfalls, how that, that gap can be plugged in terms of resources. They are also saying, obviously, that uh, if you can spend a lot of money acquiring electronic voting machines, how much money do you, are you going to need for elections? What, what if you have shortfalls and you're not even able to distribute some of those machines to the far-flung areas in the Democratic Republic of Congo? So these are some of the questions that uh, uh, the stakeholders they were asking. Look, even the controversial voting machine, electronic voting machine, the, the question, the leaders were saying, the stakeholders were saying, it is, they don't have a problem with the introduction of the electronic voting machine per se, but it is how it was introduced and the fact that it's currently illegal apparently in the Democratic Republic of Congo to use an electronic voting machine system. Uh, but if you were to, we spoke, remember, to the president of the CENI as well, Honorable Naga there, and he told us that it's a massive operation from a logistical point of view. He said they have about 603, 603 registered political parties for these elections, 21 presidential candidates. And out of the 500 seats that are up for grabs in their parliament, the National Assembly, there are about 17,500 registered candidates. If you were to look at their, their provincial parliaments, there are 715 seats that are up for grabs and 20,000 candidates who have, re who have registered for elections. Now, it means from, a, from an operational point of view, it's a massive operation. If probably uh, there was proper consultation and an involvement of the various stakeholders, firstly, towards the introduction of the electronic voting machine, and secondly, considering all the legal issues, if, for example, there was a need to amend elections, the legislation, rather, in order for them to be able to do that, I'm sure that the dialogue around the table around these elections would be very constructive at this point in time. What about an integral issue like the voters' role and the integrity of the voters' role? Correct. That is one of the issues. I mean, uh, uh, we spoke to the Catholic Church and they put the figure of the people who were in that system without any fingerprints at 7 million. And if you talk to opposition parties, they put the figure at 10 million. It doesn't matter from us. Wherever it's, whether it's 10 million or 7 million, it's still a substantial amount of people that are unaccounted for in the system. To them, it means that uh, they feel that the government might rely on that 10 million to swing the results in their favor. It means then the process loses credibility long before it actually begins, if those issues remain unaddressed. It is for that reason that we have been calling, you'll remember even in Parliament, we even wrote to President Sir Ramaphosa saying, uh, SADC at, at, at regional level and even at continental level needs to facilitate an inclusive dialogue in the DRC. So that before you go to elections, the stakeholders are given an opportunity to ventilate and discuss all of these issues which concern them. But these are massive discrepancies Correct. and we have literally two months to the day. Correct. The, the problem is that, remember, the, the letter we wrote to President Ramaphosa was in May, and he was still the chairperson of SADC at that time. Unfortunately, he waited for months, I think it was only in August, where there was an appointment of a special envoy. But from where we're sitting, it was a missed opportunity because, in our view, he should have worked towards that as the SADC chair. Because, remember, former President Becky was only appointed by President Sil Ramaphosa as in his capacity as the head of state of the republic because he had ceased to be the chairperson of SADC at the time when he made that appointment. So in our view, it was a missed opportunity. And um, uh, did you have opportunity, quite apart from speaking to the stakeholders that you've already mentioned, and of course the main protagonists uh, going into the election, the people on the ground, and, and, and what is the atmosphere currently like leading up to this election? Well, the people, I think they are excited that they will once again have an opportunity to have their say, uh, to, 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 to elect leaders of their choice. But one of the biggest challenges there, obviously, was the language barrier. Uh, because you always need to have someone who's going to translate and interpret whatever discussions you have with people, because it's a French-speaking country, and you come from South Africa, and come from, you're an Anglophone. And it was a bit problematic. But I think what is important is that the people of the Democratic Republic of Congo can't wait to have an opportunity to choose their own leaders democratically in a process that is free and fair, in a process that is transparent. Uh, but some of them obviously highlighted the issue around voter education is something that has not happened because 
with the introduction of the electronic voting machine, it means that the state should have gone on a massive voter education system so that campaign rather, so that people understand firstly the, how it works, but at the same time are comfortable about the choices that they need to make from the word go. And of course, uh, yesterday was Monday. Uh, pardon me for stating the obvious, but uh, uh, was there any indication of what came out of that discussion between the two presidents? Uh, have you heard anything? I have not heard anything. Uh, we are still trying to put our fillers out there to say what were the discussions, how do those discussions help the process in terms of preparing the Democratic Republic of Congo for the December 23 elections. But what we are trying to do and what we are going to try and do as Africa on the side, because look, we are committed to this promotion of democracy and human rights on the continent. We have made a request formally in writing to the president of the CENI asking whether it would be possible for us to go and observe elections in December. As soon as we re receive that response from him, we are going to communicate it with the relevant stakeholders, but also make it public. If not, we'll continue to play our role or try to make a contribution from the sidelines. Mr. Kwankwa, thank you so much for your time this morning. Much uh, Mr. Ngaba Yomzi Kwankwa, uh, founder and chairman of uh, the Parliamentarians Association for Human Rights or AFRIPA. And it's going to be an interesting one. Two days, two days before Christmas, that's when the DRC goes to the polls. Let's take a quick break.